one of, one, of, one of the great epic stories that was told in the comics was when, uh, you know, Batman and Superman squared off against each other. And we felt that there was a compelling reason to, to tell that kind of a story uh, today, where seemingly you might have two individuals who, you know, one being uh, almost a god, if not a god, and the other being the best that humanity has to offer in terms of what he's done to himself, uh, how he's honed himself physically and mentally uh, for a specific task. And even though on the one hand it might seem that they in fact should be allies, uh, they're actually, their approach is so different to a similar cause that it makes them enemies. Bruce Wayne in, in Batman vs. Superman He's a more mature Bruce Wayne. He's more in the public eye um, because he still is the imprimatur of the town of Gotham in terms of what they want to project as what's great about Gotham. And the Wayne family have been the great benefactors and the, the, the symbol of the Wayne family is really Bruce Wayne. So even though he has a reputation of being a playboy, and even though he has a reputation <clears throat> of uh, maybe uh, drinking too much and womanizing too much, he still stands up all the time when called in order to be there for what the needs of Gotham are. Um, Batman, on the other hand, he's also tougher He's also wiser, uh, but he's also showing the signs of a guy who's been doing it maybe a little bit too long. And in so doing, he is more comfortable with the mask on and in the suit because it allows him to actually live out his rage. In the two years that's transpired, Superman... When we, le when we left him in Man of Steel, had just presented himself to the world. And he did it in a rather magnificent way. He saved the world. So in the two years, we've watched him become the world's hero. But as the world and the press so love to do, they love to take you up and give you uh, godlike status, and once they've done that, then the critics come out and start to tear you down. And uh, it's the yin and the yang of it. So as the film opens, we begin to see that there are actually critics of Superman, that there are reasons to be worried about Superman, because even though he's doing great things, he decides which great things to do. And he decides whether or not he's going to cross international borders. And he doesn't take into consideration um, heads of states uh, opinions about his actions because he's Superman. The vast majority of the population of the world knows who these characters are because they've all grown up with them. So they're embedded in our culture. Um, they're embedded in the world's culture. And it's really an honor to be part of presenting them uh, in a new way, in a refreshed way, uh, but in a global way uh, that's never been done before. We felt that uh, if we were going to expand the universe, um, as I said earlier, we, we should really be looking to <clears throat> expand it in a way to embrace uh, the other godlike entity in the DC uh, library, which is Wonder Woman. And um, uh, she, it's just been thrilling. I, I'll, I'll never forget the first day that Gal came onto the set and it, she was in her Wonder Woman outfit and Wonder Woman costume and it was it was very emotional.